something to distract me from my knees on my hero academia after his encounter with gentle criminal in la brava izuku races back to the school festival to perform in 1a's musical showcase and yes this time it'll actually air because last week the episode wasn't finished dubbed in time so yes here we go <clears throat> on paranoia agent a policeman is corrupted by bribes and prostitution so it's just real life on Mob Cycle 100, the telepathy club is told that they are going to be shut down by the student council due to lack of members. On Black Clover, as Yami and the Elvis Charlotte test the limits of the devil's mighty word soul magic, Nero asks Finra a favor and reveals a centuries old secret. Now I click this button and wait for it to load. Ooh. Oh yeah, that leads me to ask y'all an interesting question. And ooh. Should I uh, record some of my vouchers so I can use them as clip bite, uh, sound bites instead of having to do it? And the world is... Instead of having to do it every time. Let me know somehow. Comments, tweets, Facebook posts that I'll never read. Whatever. Just do it. Reviews. Like Nike says, just do it. Oh my god, this gadget is going on and going after me tonight. Mm. You've written fricks! What will you learn? Um. What will you learn? That your actions have consequences. Seriously. Ish doer. You're on such a delay, it is actually incredible that the connection, uh, that the call hasn't uh, canceled itself. <laughs> <sighs> Turn on my headphone microphone so that I can hear myself talk to myself. Eventually. Or actually it's not gonna muffle. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. there we go. Okay. And rise you Oi. Oh, no, no, lower you, lower you, lower you, okay. Uh, there we go. Come on. Why are you so good to me? Why are you so good to me sometimes? 
but other times you're just the worst. That's that's a question for ah. that is a question for the decades. Uh. As a weird link in the string of life. <sighs> Man, it is weird to hear myself talk in my ears. And it's not drawing me off at all. Good gracious. A little, a, a little, a little delay. A, a Just delay a little? Of a delay. It's not Just exactly a, a delay. Just a little delay, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just being kind. <laughs> This... Okay, I'm just going to refresh the page. Uh, I don't care if I lose my progress. Uh, progress. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Frickin thing. Yeah, frickin' frick. Frick, frick, frick. In fact, it's time for me to replay the clip again. You frickin' fricks! When will you learn? When will you learn? That your actions have consequences! I think the delay might be a little better now. Oh, good. Shadow do When I say delay, you say off. Delay. Off. Delay. Off. Okay, we're good. Finally. Good grief. That was ridiculous. Now I can turn my own voice out of my head so I don't have to hear myself talk. <laughs> On Jothra's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind. A fortune teller speaks cryptically to a teenager in Sardinia who hides a remarkable secret. I wish I knew what that was. Hey. <laughs> and on uh, Naruto Shippuden, Naruto uses his sensory powers to detect and destroy the transformed white... Z oh, crap. I looked away at the wrong time. The white Zetsu clones. Got a little... Gesundheit. Exactly. And that is your tune. Now me you hurt your resume up to it. As we are back to it in the game. And now let me just check. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me check the number five real quick. Uh, uh, da, da. Yeah, I guess that counts. And then that. Da, 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 da. See if there's any news. See if there's any news. I don't see any news. I don't see any news. Oh, here is some news about our favorite show ever. Okay. According to the producer at Aniplex, Shoki Niwa, the f final episodes of Sword Art Online Nautilization are still planned to be released in July. Now, while the production crews have been working on the show from home, the cast are currently unable uh, to do voiceover sessions, among other issues, due to the lockdown. I don't know why they don't just ah. do it. I don't know why they don't just do it like they do here in America, which they do it in their homes. Is it that one's for soundproof rooms, I guess? I don't know. That's what we need. Well, so, so, that's, that's what we need, a soundproof room. <laughs> well, here's an idea. And some then you, of can, the, hear, then uh, you can hear you me was... echo off my own voice. <laughs> and instead of just me yeah. hearing that. Or if you're ready for this, if you have a closet with a bunch of clothes in it, do it from there. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, you know, the late great uh, Don La, yeah, the uh, late great Don LaFontaine used to do that. Or if you have a bathroom with good acoustics, there you go. Yeah, just make yeah. sure no one has to use a bathroom for a while. Yeah, that's what the lock's for. Uh, apropos. 
Just right, I get a little see. red light on it, just in case. How about that? Yeah. That's what you got to do on the airplanes when you're recording. Um, uh, there's no tsunami news from what I can see. Uh, just look at the uh, face, uh Twitter feed. So, I'm going to toss it off to Steve. So he can toss off. Don't think about it. And the delay has returned. Great. Very much, Jay. Okay. Oh, Oops. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, Brain. There we go. There we ah, go. shoot. Yep. The delay returns. So, so here we go. Yes. Go on. I'm not even going to say a word. Unbelievable. <sighs> okay, so I'll just... Just uh, talking and uh, do my little thing here, folks. Time for okay. Time for your wrestling report. Hi, everybody. Steve the Baxman Baxley here, former WC WWE WCW TNA Booker and legendary curmudgeon Vince Russo says AEW needs TV writers on their creative team, and as expected. The legendary Jim Cornette doesn't agree with him. Can I have the sound effect board here? Thank you very much. You Let's like hear it. it. Yes. No. What will you learn? What will you learn? That your actions have consequences. Finally, something we agree, something that we a lot agree with. Bruce needs to be I'm just saying, the grown from day one. If they want to grow their audience, they need television writers. Long are not going to bring in new viewers. My opinion, Russo wrote. A fan tweeted a screenshot of Russo's tweet. Cornette and asked for his opinion. Cornette, who's out of the AEW product on his podcast, did not agree. And this is what he said. I could, mm-hmm. I could say we're almost 100% saying the, the only thing that can make AEW TV any worse is TV writers, Cornette responded. There were no further comments from Russo or Cornette, or Cornette who've had a history of disliking each other for years. No kidding. I thought all was lovey-dovey. Anyway, let's uh, keep going here. Um, speaking of which, uh, WWE and AEW wrestlers unable to work due to COVID-19. Do we have a list to make it to recent t- TV tapings due to travel restrictions related to the coronavirus pandemic. Yeah, I can speak English. The Observer Newsletter, which, by the way, please note, believe with a grain of salt, reports that Robert Roode and the Singe brothers have all been away from WWE, WWE, WWE TV. Yeah, I can speak English. As of late, due to those restrictions, as they live in Canada. It was noted that Brock also lived in Canada. You're kidding. But WWE was uh, able to uh, pull some strings to get him to work for WrestleMania 36. Wrestled since WWE Elimination Chamber on March 8th. The Singh Brothers last wrestled on February 14th at WWE 205 Live. These restrictions at the border are also why Stu Grayson and Evo Uno of the Dark Order of WTV, they both live in Canada and have been unable to get across the border. Their absence was acknowledged on AEW TV this week when it was noted that they remain top contenders for the AEW World Tag Team titles, but they aren't around due to circumstances, and because of that, the best friends have been on a hot streak to being top contenders. While AEW has kept Uno and Grayson at the top of the tag team division rankings, Grayson 
Austin has a wrestling uh, on AEW Dark, and Uno has been out of the ring since the week before that. That's evil Uno, not my cat Uno. There is no word yet on when these wrestlers will be able to get back across the border uh, from Canada to the U.S., but as you can see, there are a few more WWE and WWE wrestlers who have also been unable to make it to work due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Oh, dear, oh dear, 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 dear. Uh, more, more, more. Yes, indeed. Um, Vince McMahon reportedly... FAW Slam this year. As noted earlier in the week, WWE officials are reportedly actively searching for a new SummerSlam location, one that would allow them to have fans in the crowd after the mayor of Boston recently announced that events where large crowds are brought together will not be allowed through the summer. It was noted that the southern United States is possible for a new SummerSlam location, specifically Florida and Georgia. Do you wonder why? Regarding the WrestleVotes report that says SummerSlam weekend might be pushed back to September, it was stated by The Observer that if waiting until September is the only way to have SummerSlam in front of a live crowd, then the feeling is that Vince would make the move. That move has not been decided on, and Vince hasn't outright committed to it, as SummerSlam is still on the schedule for August as of midweek. Vince is the only person who will make the call on a new SummerSlam date, and he changes his mind like I changed my underwear. The Observer added that Vince right now sees the COVID-19 pandemic as something inconvenient because it's getting in the way of his vision of what the WWE product is supposed to be and his plans for moving forward. SummerSlam is still scheduled for August 23rd from the TD Garden in Boston as of this writing. WWE also has the August 21st SmackDown Go Home show scheduled for that same place, as well as the WWE NXT TakeOver Boston event on August 22nd and the post-SummerSlam Raw on August 24th. The 2020 WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony it was next form WrestleMania week when WWE had to change their original plans. We'll give all the details. If the uh, WWE is going to change date and location for the big event, it's likely that an announcement will be made in the next few weeks. Stick and stay a part of it. Yes. Uh, let's see what else is coming on. Oh yeah, let's go for uh, this week's AEW Dark lineup, which you can see on YouTube, and you might might get to see on TBS. AEW announced the lineup for this Tuesday's AEW Dark at 7 p.m. Eastern on AEW's YouTube channel, as promised by AEW President Tony Khan. Promotion is doing another stacked lineup for this show. You got Gordon versus the uh, Hotter Than Hot, Hiroaku Shida, Clutch Adams, Shots, Jimmy Havoc, same with his uh, main squeeze fiancette, uh, Penelope Ford, versus Musa and Lee Johnson, Sean Dean versus Fenix, John Cruz versus Luther. Uh, Private Party versus Ryan Rembrandt, Mike Reed, Alan Angels versus Sammy Guevara, and Serpentico taking on Darby Allen. So that's going to be fun, if not to, if if not entertaining. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's continue on. Brody Lee, uh, excuse me, Mister Brody Lee, uh, had a chance to uh, talk. And he said he's happy with the opportunity he has at AEW. After being used as a heavy for most of his time in WWE, Lee debuted in AEW as the real leader of the Dark Order. Lee appeared on Busted Open Radio to talk about working for AEW. Lee said he's ready to prove he deserved the opportunity to be a top performer. Quote, 
That's the main reason why I didn't want to be WWE anymore, because I knew those opportunities weren't coming. No matter how hard I scratched and clawed, no matter what I proved, they were one of the chosen ones. Now here I am, I'm proving myself, but now it's like, I know I'm great at professional wrestling. I know I deserve these spots, but now I have to show up and prove that to other people. So now there's a certain pressure on me because there's no one to blame anymore. So now, now here I am in these spots. I'm in the main event last night. I'm in the main event next Saturday. And the pressure is there because now I have to prove it. But I know deep down I can prove it. I know deep down that I belong there. And it's wonderful, very freeing feeling to be in that spot. Lee said it's great to share the main event with John Moxley, someone he wrestled for the better part of a decade during their ascent from, C- from CZW to WWE. Now, Lee was supposed to debut for AEW in his hometown of Rochester, but his debut was derailed by the coronavirus pandemic. Lee still made his scheduled debut, just he did it without a crowd. Lee said it was frustrating his debut was from Rochester, but that he was itching to start wrestling again. Lee said, we're quoting, March 18th was my debut. I'm from Rochester. The AEW show on March 18th was slated to be in Rochester, New York. So on the 11th, I was at the gym while the show was happening, and I watched every kind of thing go down. So I was one week away from debuting in my hometown in front of the 80. EW crowd it was so frustrating for a minute. And called me and said, Look, I'm like HMO here. I need to get out. So there was no hesitation at all for me to jump on the opportunity to do it in front of I yearn for that AEW crowd. We all do. We all want it back. And we all under, we also understand for at the same time and an internet audience. So we understand that a live crowd is not the only crowd we are in front of. Lee said that wrestling in front of his peers was an interesting dynamic, noting he's getting more comfortable in the environment the more he works in it. Lee will challenge Moxley for the AEW World Championship at double or nothing. While Lee has wrestled Moxley many times, the AEW roster provides fresh matchups for him. Lee said the list of AEW talent he wants to wrestle is long. A guy like Kenny Omega, Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, Cody Rhodes. The list is so hard, even proud and powerful Jericho. All those guys, Sammy Guevara, among others. It's crazy to say I don't want to come off like everybody, but literally almost everyone on the roster is a, a fun match up to me. It's all fresh, it's all new, and it's very cool. But a guy like, like Kenny Omega is probably a the top of the list to have that crazy big time matchup. I wake up to. Pardon and moi. We have a firing to our arm, spark of the uh, uh, WWE kind. Uh, as noted earlier this week, Rachel Ellering, known as Rachel Evers in WWE NXT, was another talent released from her contract back in April as part of the company-wide WWE budget cuts bought on by COVID-19. Ellering reportedly spoke to WWE officials about having issues with the medical team and with medical procedures a few months back, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Ellering had been doing rehab after a reconstructive knee surgery, she worked the first two May Young Classic tournaments and signed with NXT in January 2019, suffered a torn ACL in July of last year, and, and has been on the shelf since then. Ellering's complaint on the medical team and some of their procedures were reportedly not received well. And that had led to her departure. It was reported by the Observer that Ellering, and if that last name sounds familiar, it's because she happens to be the daughter of famed wrestling manager and wrestler in his own uh, lifetime, WWE Hall of Famer Paul Ellering was given two options a few weeks back. There's no word on what exactly those options were, but both of them reportedly had her getting released. Ellering reportedly chose one of those options and was then released. There was a time when Ellering was interested in leaving WWE on her own, but this departure was a company decision. Oh, dear. 
Yes. Um, we also have a report that due to the coronavirus pandemic, the WWE reportedly had a major storyline plan for this spring and summer, but they were nixed due to the pandemic. Officials came up with a lengthy major story that was to unfold over the span of several weeks. That it was to play out the McMahon was in an explosion or the Nuts Invasion debut did. The storyline was put on hold due to COVID-19, forcing WWE to tape TV shows on closed sets with no fans. Crowd reactions play a major part when it comes to the direction of WWE matches and storylines. And this was key in the decision to put the storyline on hold. There is no word yet on exactly what WWE had planned or if they will move forward with the storyline when they are allowed to have normal shows with fans in attendance again. Good luck. A uh, couple more little articles uh, for us, and then we'll uh, hit some uh, uh, good old uh, movie and TV reports. Uh, once again, there are no reports of uh, Ring of Honor as well. Uh, AEW, by the way, has announced a match for next week's Dynamite. It will be Broken Matt Hardy taking on Sammy Guevara for AEW Dynamite next Wednesday. As announced before, it will be Matt Hardy and the Elite versus the Inner Circle in a stadium stampede match at AEW Double or Nothing on May 23rd. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Uh, Let's see. Do we have anything else? Okay. I think we're... Oh. Uh, and once again, uh, Jim Cornette's comments have uh, made one wrestler uh, speak volume. Dana Brooke responded to comments that were recently said about her by James E. on his podcast. Cornette was reviewing WWE's Money in the Bag pay-per-view. Dana Brooke's entire face looks like it was remodeled after somebody set fire to it and put it out. What the f- happened? Did she do that on purpose? Or was she in a horrible accident? Did quote? How about you stop hiding behind a keyboard and come say it to my face? Because I doubt you would. You would when you see me in person. Mark. How about stop spreading hate and spread positivity? positivity and wow she spoke volumes and by the way those of you who have HGTV's house in a hurry and have been wondering what the hell happened to Kevin Thorne those who check out a recent episode of house in a hurry may have seen a very familiar face in Kevin Furtig known by the as Mordecai and Kevin Thorne the former superstar has found another career for himself in the wonderful world of real estate. The Indianapolis-based realtor was tasked to find a couple moving into town, a home within 48 hours. A former colleague in Tommy Dreamer connected Furtick with the person casting for the series, feeling he would make a good fit. I ended up meeting this couple because they were calling on a listing I had. I did a FaceTime video with them and walked around this house and said, listen, this is going to be the weirdest thing you over here. I used to be a pressure wrestler. I need to do this show. I need to do this from out of town. Would you want to do it? They said, absolutely. For a 22-minute episode, they filmed for 48 hours after the initial episode. They were in support of the pro wrestling community. The 43-year-old considers himself blessed. Uh, quote, just from boys, I mean, great job. It's been a cool couple of days. HGTV was really happy with the ratings. It's uh, it's hopefully a cool thing that might be able to open up some other guys out there who are still at this stage of their career. When the independent scene is just not paying the bills, you still love wrestling, but you have to get real and hustle a little bit. Real estate has definitely been good to me. His journey to even finding his new career, this new career path wasn't easy. 
Frederick recalls looking for jobs after leaving the ring behind. Quote, I couldn't find them. I put 10 plus years of WWE experience on a resume and I get human resources people calling me. What kind of skill set can we use you to hi- can we use to hire you? I mean, I sold being punched in the face like it killed me. You don't think I can sell copy paper stuff like that? It got a little old. Well, Ferdick found work in bartending and running a local bar. He began to gain a following, meeting patrons, including several realtors. They felt he would excel at their world, and so he gave it a shot. It started taking off in standard form. I had a vision of where I wanted to go. They had a vision that would make them look good, and after breaking off, they told me I probably wouldn't sell another house that year. His detractors were wrong. By rewards, the rest of the ladder never more than two years. Remax, you're up, up, up in the air. Ferdick embraced his wrestling roots by becoming the real estate badass, guiding people to the point that they can say, a champ is home. Uh, it is what we learned in the business. For WWE, the best independent guys there, guys who know how to switch t shirts, but they have one common goal to get to the dance of the closing table. That's why I went with the tag, The Champ is Home. It's just so right there, in your face. Verdict was immediately nervous when he started out. It's been a learning process. Um, believe it or not, are you ready for this? Though Furtick has gotten a lot of referrals from his wrestling fans, he hasn't sold a house to one yet, perhaps a future goal, to accomplish. Believe it or not, Rick Steiner is killing it in Atlanta. Mike Knox is killing it in Florida. Simon Diamond, I want to say, is in the Philly area. Former ref Kevin Keenan is up in Philly, Furtick said. A lot of guys are getting out there. We're using our talents. That's all it is. When you get a house, you list it, you mark it. I have to think of the best approach to market the house and sell it. It's definitely a job built for the boys as long as they use it to that potential. Uh, Kevin Furtick can be found at the Kevin Furtick on Twitter and Instagram as well as Facebook at Kevin Furtick Realty. Kevin's full interview with Wrestling Inc. aired as part of a recent episode of their podcast, The Wrestling Inc. Daily, which you can listen to at WrestlingInc.com And uh, just uh, one more little wrestling note before we go to a brief uh, entertainment news uh, voltage. Uh, Drew Golak was moved to the alumni section of their website as is he is no longer with WWE. He was not released but his contract expired after last night's Smackdown was taped. They are trying to come to terms on a new deal. Since his WWE contract expired, Gulick doesn't have a 90-day non-compete, so he can wrestle anywhere at any time he wants. His last WWE match was last night on the Fox Friday Night SmackDown against Daniel Bryan. It was an Intercontinental Championship Tournament match, which he ended up losing to Bryan. Uh, it received, uh, believe it or not, a uh, great response fans online. He debuted with the WWE in 2016. Let's give you uh, a little bit of uh, Hollywood stuff before we uh, call it a Fred or a night. And we have, sadly, uh, two passages, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, report on. Let's go to uh, the man, the myth, and the legend, Um, Mr. Fred Willard, who parlayed up, boys, up, who parlayed a knack for naive characters in the co starring roles on the television series as Fernwood Tonight and America Tonight and Everybody Loves Raymond. And in several memorable films, passed away today. He was 86. His passage was confirmed by his agent, Michael Eisenstadt who said this, quote, uh, Fred was one of the busiest comedic actors in a career which lasted over 50 years. He had recently com- completed his Emmy-nominated recurring role on Modern Family and can be seen later this month in his recurring role as Steve Carell's dad in the Netflix series Space 
Tremendous force. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel had Fred reoccur on his show on an average of every two weeks doing comedic sketches until the stay-at-home order began. Fred truly enjoyed every role and gave each performance his own special spin. He was truly a comedic genius. Um, he was a voice actor, voice star in the animated Disney film Wall-E in 2008. He was an Air Force colonel in This Is Spinal Tap. He was announcer Buck Laughlin in Best in Show, manager Mike LaFontaine in A Mighty Win, and news, make, and news mag host Chuck Porter in Four Year Consideration. He was also seen in Wizards of Waverly Place in Buck Kendry's First Family as Basil St. Morley in The Wedding Planner and in Family Manners, among other shows. Perhaps Willard's biggest role came in 1977, where he appeared on a much touted late night Cindy comedy sh- uh uh, talker Fernwood tonight playing co-host and sidekick Jerry Hubbard opposite Martin Mollis, Barth Gimble on the faux talk show. The series was produced by Norman Lear and Alan Thicke. It was a spinoff of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. It was rebranded as America Tonight in its second season. He collaborated with Moll in several uh, more TV projects and the 88 film Portrait of a White Marriage. Um... And uh, a lot of other things, folks. He, uh, for example, uh, he joined Second City in Chicago and was a co-founder of the improv group Ace Trucking Company. Uh, he moved back to television in 66, becoming a regular guest star on such shows as Get Smart. And in the 80s, everyone really uh, remembered him as one of the hosts of the NBC, NBC reality series Real People, executive produced by Mr. Laughlin himself, George Shutter, and host a 78 installment of Saturday Night Live, an appearance remembered as a store clerk in a venue that only sold scotch tape. He uh, appeared in films such as Fun with Dick and Jane, How to Beat the High Cost of Living, Permanent Midnight, Austin Powers, The Spire, Shag Me, Harold and Kumar, Go to White Castle, Monster House, Epic Movie, Max Rose, and Fifty Shades of Black, among others. And um, let's give you, sad, sadly, a uh, another one. Um, the woman who really broke the mold when uh, a former beauty queen, a former Miss America became a uh, co-host of the popular NFL Today series. TV host, entrepreneur, and first lady of Kentucky, Phyllis George, passed away uh, Friday following a long struggle with a blood disorder. And to the memory of both... uh, Fred Willard... And Phyllis George, uh, Remember when the folks at Fox debuted under the banner, this is the year, this is Fox? Well, apparently this was the year, this is Fox. After eight long years without topping the rankings, the mass singer and Super Bowl-injected Fox is poised to take first place among adults in the cherished 18-49 to uh, group for the 2019-2020 television season. While the leaner Fox will score the long-sought win for its Fox Corp CEO and entertainment boss, Charlie Collier, CBS will be having a bit of the been-there-done-that moment with the now George Cheeks overseeing network wrapping its 12th consecutive year number one overall in total viewers. With just under a week to go until the season officially ends, May 20th, my birthday. Fox is 1.78 average in the key demo. Not only is that a rise of 13% for the Murdoch-owned outlet compared with its second place showing for last year's TV season, the network, rich in NFL, WWE SmackDown, and Unscripted is the only one 
up in the demo and viewers 17% this year. Things may have gone back to the future at CBS via its remelding with Viacom, but the song pretty much stayed the same in terms of sets of eyeballs. Yes, overall audience slipped 13% from last year in live and same-day metrics, and this was the first season since The Big Bang Theory ended. But don't cry too many tears for the House of Sherry Redstone. As CBS has the February 7th, 2021 Super Bowl 55 coming down the line, aiming to provide a touchdown or two. If one recalls, they got a word that when NBC uh, has the Olympics. As, most, uh, as the most recent Nielsen figures of May 10th, CBS had the most watched scripted series and the second most watched show overall after NBC's very healthy Sunday Night Football. Well, then CIS in its 17th season, the Mark Harmon-led procedural held steady with last year in viewership and moved up from third spot with the absence of the Big Bang Theory. It may seem far stuck down America, but it's no surprise to see the NFL dominate the season's 18-49 ratings with four of the top shows, NBC Saturday night, uh, Sunday Night Football, Fox and NFL Network Thursday Night Football, NBC Sunday Pre-Game, and Fox's OT. That's a leap of three spots for the OT from last year, pushing the mask Singer down almost 16% for its second season. NBC's emotional powerhouse, This Is It, meanwhile took a 24% hit to slide to sixth in the overall 18-49s, down two places from last year. Having said that, the Dan Fogelman created trauma remains the Everest of series among the key demo. And believe me, folks... We cheer for Fox. We do cheer. Don't believe me? And by the way, next week, or uh, this coming week, we should have the official assemblance of the 2019-2020, yeah, no, the 2021 fall season uh, programs. And uh, we'll try to give you some of them. Uh, next week, when it all becomes evident. But brain, what can we say? It's been a, uh, it's been a somewhat uh, Lukeish uh, big season uh, for television. A little mixed bag, but uh, from uh, from film wise, uh, the remake of Blake Edwards' classic Ten. Going to be something interesting, and uh, as Hollywood starts to uh, get things uh, and just to, uh, see about uh, everything here, uh, whoa, that's about uh, that's about that. And come Monday, uh, just a little reminder: award season. There would be candidates for 17 open slots on the 54-member Board of Governors of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science. We'll be off and running at 9 Pacific Daylight Time. And on Friday, the Academy notified members that so-called opt-in voting for the board seats will be active. So, uh, we can, even though it is uh, not exactly post-season, but... Uh, the awards uh, season is uh, getting ready for its uh, big event. And uh, Scoob, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, you should. Uh, it uh, reportedly will be the top grossing film of the week. So there you go. Hit the high notes like we do brain in an entertainment section here of the Russell Anime Hut well I think that just about does it uh, thank you for listening 
Hopefully next week it won't have so much of a delay. Stinking internet. You better not or I will kick your booty. Don't know how, but I will. Anyways. Andre. That's Steve. And we're going to end it now. <laughs> you freaking freaks. When will you learn? When will you learn? That your actions have consequences.